All right, everybody, the time has come to crack open a set booster box of Modern Horizons 2. Uh, Modern Horizons 1 was fantastic, but some of the stuff in Modern Horizons 2, my goodness, the spoiler list was like a holiday or like Christmas or whatever you want to call it. It was absolutely stunning. So we're going to crack open uh, an entire box of set boosters. And this is actually my first box of set boosters and my first set boosters that I'll be opening of, out of everything. So I'm kind of excited for that because... I don't really know what's inside of the set boosters. I know they're kind of like more of a finely tuned system, but, um, you know, I want to see what we get in Modern Horizons 2 and see what happens. So let's uh, dive right in and start cracking some packs. Um, because I'm using a camera that uh, doesn't hiccup, but doesn't like really long video frames uh, or long video times, uh, we're going to be breaking this into three sections, most likely. So it's 30 packs, so we'll do... Um, or no, maybe it's not 30. I don't know how many it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Maybe it is 30. Yeah, it's got to be 30 packs. So we'll break this into three separate videos so we can crack it open. Uh, looking at the box, you get a guaranteed foil and an art card. That's pretty cool. Uh, just looking around the box, nothing too amazing. Broaden your horizons. Ha, I get it. So, yeah, um, you know, I'm pretty excited to try this out and see exactly what can be done or what can be cracked open in here. And this is obviously going to dictate my playstyle uh, in Commander. So, uh, you know, what decks I use, which ones I build, everything else like that. I want this squirrel, Chatterfang, I believe is uh, the squirrel's name. And it looks like every single pack has actually the squirrel art on it. So we should be channeling our luck and make sure that we get exactly that. So I'm going to push these out of the way. We'll start with pack number one, or uh, I guess you want to call it a uh, pile number one. Let me bring this camera just a little bit closer. I'd rather have a better zoom on it than, uh, you know, on the whole thing. So these packs feel kind of loose, which is really interesting. Um, but yeah, we shall see what we get. Oh, there we go. Squirrel. Game over. We're good. We can uh, all go home now. No, those are the backs of it, actually. Um, so yeah, Squirrel Token, good luck already. The backs of the cards actually look a little, uh, not darker, but they look a little more, like, high definition than, you know, original old school magic cards. So, yeah. Um, so the first thing, uh, art series card. Ooh, and it's signed in, like, a foil. All right, that looks pretty cool. I like the, uh, art on that card. I have no idea what it's for. All right, got a forest, some commons. Recalibrate. All right. Cool. Mental journey. I'm just going to plow through the commons just as our first couple videos, just to see what it's about and what it talks about. All right. Oh, well, we're already in uncommons. Wow. I'm just like skipping past it. Uh, glinting creeper has converged. Can't be blocked with creatures power two or less. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Uh, let's get our zoom a little better. There we go. Sweep the skies. All right. A lot of converge stuff going on. I kind of like that. Uh, a lot of converge. Oh, Duh, I realize why. Every pack has a theme to it. So this pack has a theme of Converge. So every card is, or most of the cards, are going to focus on the idea of Converge, whether it be basic land cycling to search for stuff or, you know, things like that. Uh, but a lot of this will probably have a lot to do with Converge as a general theme. All right. A Chitter Splitter. All right. Beginning of your upkeep, you can sacrifice a token. If you do, put an Acorn Counter. And squirrels you control get plus one plus one for each acorn counter on Jitter Splitter. And you can create a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token. Pretty neat. Um, I want to run a squirrel commander deck, so that's uh, definitely something I want to hold on to. All right, we got a greed. Very iconic card. Pay two life, draw a card. I love it. Why is that focus not working well? There we go. All right, and we got a sketch of a la la Lazotep Chancellor. Whenever you discard a card, you pay one if you do amass two. So you get to make some zombies. That's pretty cool. And also for our foil, we got a Knighted Myrrh. So it has Adapt. You can put a plus one plus one counter on it. It gains double strike every time you put one or more plus one plus one counters on it. Very cool. I like it. So that was our first pack. Not bad. Let me rearrange to play around with our spacing a little bit. We'll put the rares up there with the tokens. We'll put the art here. And foils there. That way you can see everything as it unravels. All right, so first pack looks like some Converge and a Chitter Splitter attached to it just because. 
All right, our art. All right, uh, looks like we got that uh, legendary merfolk. Very cool. Wasn't signed, though. A foil island. I like that. I'll take that. I mean, it's not the best foil, but it's definitely a beautiful, beautiful land. All right, we have these indestructible artifact lands, which I think are really cool. All right. Uh, looks like we have some affinity stuff. Um, affinity for artifacts and artifact land cycling. That's pretty cool. Late to dinner, just a cute, flavorful card. Um, you know, you bring a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield and you create a food token. Pretty neat. Discerning taste. Look at the top four cards of your library. One to your hand. Rest in the graveyard. Gain lake equal to the greatest power of creature cards. Neat. All right. Creature with flying haste and madness. Cool. Power Depot tapped. Tap add one mana of any mana. Add it to artifact spells or abilities of artifacts. And it has modular. That's a lot of stuff going on there for one specific land. So that's pretty neat. All right. We got a sketched out. Uh, Nykthos Paragon. Whenever you gain life, put that many plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. Once per turn limit. All right. That seems pretty fair. And looking at the rare symbol, it looks like the rare symbol is like over colored or something like that, which is like really interesting on the sketch. I like the uh, attention to detail on there. Territorial Kavu. Uh, I remember playing Kavu back in the days of Invasion. Uh, power and toughness equal the number of basic land type among lands you control. Whenever it attacks, choose one. Discard a card if you do a draw or exile a card from a graveyard. Not bad. This could be a pretty powerful card, I imagine. <clears throat> Soul Snare, exile a creature that's attacking you or a planeswalker you control. Cool. That's an uncommon. Uh, Ornithopter of Paradise. Ooh, and it's like the time-shifted version, or the uh, the old-school version. This is like a Birds of Paradise, but it can go in every deck. Uh, and it's an Ornithopter. It's just a really, really cool card. Um, this is definitely something that I'm going to be putting into some decks, because it's a chump blocker, it's generic to play it, it adds one mana of any color. It's just overall a fantastic card. All right, foil card. Uh, Bannerhide, Krushok, it's just a common. Reinforce and Scavage, cool. Ooh, and we got something from the list, I believe it is. Uh, you can tell with the little Planeswalker symbol at the bottom. And I got a Lightning Bolt from the 25 version of this card. No idea what that means, but I will take it. And that's going to go into commons, I guess. Um, oh, foil, you can go here. Already not following my organizational pattern. All right, <clears throat> next pack. We're going to be moving a little bit quicker now just to kind of plow through some cards. All right, our art. Very cool. Looks pretty. Very blue. All right. Uh, we've got a land. A common, 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 common. Uh, another converge card. All right, cool. That's not what I care about because I've wanted this card already. This is one of my first cards on my list. Esper Sentinel, also known as Ristic Buddy. Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card unless you pay X, where it is its power. It's going to draw you a lot of cards. All right. Goblin Bombardment. Sacrifice a creature. One damage to any target. Love it. Great, great, great fun card. A Chatterstorm with Old School Border. Uh, create a 1-1 green squirrel token. And Storm. That is just bonkers. So I like that. Ooh, a Sanctum Weaver. Foil. Uh, X mana of any one color. X is the number of enchantments you control. I wasn't going to do an enchantment-themed commander deck, but now I kind of feel like I have to. And it looks like just some uh, token with a really cool, like, ripped kind of card as well. Neat. All right. Let's crack the next pack. Uh, that was a really, really good, good pack with a Sanctum Weaver and an Esper Sentinel. Uh, those are two cards that I've wanted. So uh, the odds seem to be ever in my favor. All right. We got an art card. Cool. A foil land, neat. I'll put the foils there. Tragic fall, that's a good card. Um, minus three, minus three on a creature, but minus 13, minus 13 if it's the last card in your hand. Sometimes top decking removal is pretty darn powerful. All right, some cards of madness, just a bunch of cool cards. Arcbound javelinier. Uh, the Boros modular deck mechanics look pretty neat. All right, rise and shine. Target non artifact creature you control, a non creature artifact. Comes a zero zero artifact creature, four counters, and you can overload it. That's pretty neat. All right. Uh, extruder, sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It's a free sacrifice outlet. That might see some play at some point because it's colorless, so that's neat. Phantasmal Dreadmaw. Wow, that is a really cool art on this. Um, becomes target of spell or ability, sacrifice it. Sure. And also, uh, World Weary. Searches for basic lands, but also gives an enchanted creature minus four, minus four. That's pretty neat. 
and a Thopter token. Cool. Next pack. All right. Getting lots of those squirrel tokens for our art. Ooh, that's cute. That's adorable. All right, got a land, some commons, commons. Nothing that's of extreme love. Road to Ruin, search a library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield, tap and shuffle. Decent. <clears throat> Aftermath, target creature equal to the number of lands you control. That's really not bad. Um, that's a card that is good and limited. Uh, strike it rich. You can make a treasure token, but you can also flashback it to make another one. I think this card has potential in Storm decks. Ooh, Academy Manufacturer. Again, another card that I wanted. If you create a clue, food, or treasure token, you make one of each. So you start running a deck where you run a bunch of those different things, you could find some really, really good synergies to just keep making like tokens and tokens and tokens that let you draw, gain life, and generate mana. Nice. Carry on Ranger. All around amazing card. Return a forest to its owner's hand. Uh, you control its owner's hand. Untap target creature once per turn. Love it. All right, Galvanic Relay with Old School Border. Exile top card of your library. During your next turn, you can play it. That's pretty neat. And it's got Storm. Decent. And Foul Watcher. Enters the battlefield. Surveil 1. Delirium plus 1 plus 0. That's not bad for a 2-2 two -two flying that also lets you Surveil 1. Not terrible. So I will take it. And we, of course, had that Squirrel token. All right. I'm pretty happy with these packs so far. Um, you know, as you can tell, some of this stuff is kind of... Uh, like on the pricier side with uh, just magic cards in general, but hey, you know, that kind of is what it is. I don't know what that is, but that looks really cool and really terrifying. All right, basic land, a common, 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 uncommon, abiding grace. Beginning of your end step, choose one, gain a life, or return target creature card with mana one from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty cool. That can keep recurring things over and over and over again. Or if you can't use it, just gain some life. I like it. Uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler. This is the card that like becomes the uh, the the Delver, um, Delver of Secrets. I think it is whatever the card is that's like the blue mana one one that turns into the three two flyer. Uh, whenever you cast a non creature spell, surveil one. So look at the top card. If you don't like it, trash it. Delirium gives it plus two plus two flying, and it has to attack each turn. But turning this into a three three flyer is pretty darn powerful. All right. Nope, I don't want to ruin the next card, because that's actually going to be a commander deck of mine. Uh, Fast and Furious, discard a card, draw two cards, three damage. But Garth, one eye. Pulled it, love it. This card is just bonkers, because it goes back to the historic level of like how amazing magic was. Choose a card name hasn't been chosen from among Disenchant, Brain Geyser, Terror, Shivan Dragon, Regrowth, and Black Lotus. Make a copy of the card. Uh, you still have to pay its cost, but you basically get to play a Black Lotus or a Shivan Dragon or just this does everything that you could possibly need in all five colors. So it's definitely something fun to play around with. Um, yeah. And a Bone Shredder. All right. Nice. I love Bone Shredder. It's a great card. Uh, it's just super powerful. Yeah. Underworld Hermit sketched. Whenever it enters the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 green squirrel tokens equal to your devotion to black. That's pretty neat as well. All right, and a Captain Ripley Vance. Whenever you cast your third spell each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Captain Ripley, and then it does damage equal to its power to any target. That's cool. That would make a nice, uh, like a popper commander kind of deck. And oh, oh my. Okay, I'll take that. Uh, from the list is Skitherix, the Blight Dragon. Uh, this is just one of those commander cards that people kind of hate you for. Uh, but I can understand why this card is just absolutely bonkers. It's a three turn clock uh, in Commander, and you can give it haste, and you can also regenerate it, and it's just completely bonkers. So, uh, thanks, the list. I, I love it. <laughs> All right. That is uh, some bonkers pulls right there already. So, I am, I am pretty darn happy with this. And as you might notice, this is a pretty sloppy opening, but uh, I don't really care. So. Yeah, uh, another art card. Ooh, nice. Foil land. Common, 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 common. Fey offering. If you cast both a creature and a non-creature spell this turn, you make a clue, a food, and a treasure token. That's pretty neat. Gain control of target you don't control. Untap it, gains haste. Yep, storm. That's pretty neat. Blood braid marauder. Uh, one red for a 3-1. Can't block. Delirium gives it Cascade. Ooh, that's just a lot of stuff going on. 
I like it. Uh, Mog Salvage. If opponent controls an island, you have a mountain. You can play it without casting a spell. Uh, cost. Destroy an artifact. Love it. Old School Marble Gargoyle. Uh, not necessarily a great card, but a, a cool card nonetheless. And we got a Rift Sower. Uh, it's a Mana Dork, but it also has Suspend too. This is another cool card that I looked at and thought it was neat that you like fused like a, a Mana Dork with uh, whatever that Suspend card is that lets you search for a basic and put it into play tapped. Cool. And a food token. Neat. All right. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Making some progress. All right. Art card. Cool. A land. I, a galvanic ray. Common, 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 common. Uh, said and done. Return an instant or sorcery from your graveyard to hand. Cool. Or tap two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Neat. That's pretty cool. Draw X cards or X is number of card types among your graveyard. For five mana, that's a little pricey, but I could see that getting pretty powerful. Altar of the Goyth. Whenever a creature you control attacks, gets plus some, uh, attacks alone, plus X plus X, number of card types in all graveyards, and Lurgoyth creatures you control have trample. So that's quite interesting as well. All right, Zabaz the Glimmer Wasp. This is an, a, a commander I kind of thought about playing with as well, just like modular stuff modular shenanigans you know that kind of stuff um one mana for a I guess one one because it has modular one uh if a tr modular triggered ability would put one or more plus one plus one counters on it you get that many plus one instead you can destroy an artifact you control and you can give it flying to end a turn pretty cool pretty cool oh look at that titania nice i love it titania is such an amazing card and i use it in one of my decks that likes landfall but this might find a second home. I like it. Abundant Harvest. Choose land or not land. Reveal cards at the top of your library until you're revealed of the chosen kind. That goes into your hand. The rest on the bottom. This is kind of like a card that lets you control your next draw to a certain degree. Uh, I think it's a super powerful card, and I think it's going to be used in a lot of different decks because even if you draw it late game, you can be like, uh, I want a non-land card now because I have enough lands. And in early game, you can get exactly what you need. All right, Dekmos Bridge, just another artifact land, and we got a Phyrexian Germ Token. Nice. All right, two more left of this pile. And then I got to let my phone cool down for a couple minutes and also send this to my group chat of friends. All right, bunch of stuff floating around. A land, common, 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 common. Another Captain Ripley Vance. Uh, Thraben Watcher. Uh, flying Vigilance, other non-token creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have Vigilance. Pretty neat. Uh, let's see. Gaia Drone Dehada. I don't know if I saw this. Oh, I remember seeing this card now. Yeah, uh, one blue, black, red. Protection from permanents with per uh, corruption counters on them. Plus one. Each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Put a corruption counter on up to one other target creature or planeswalker. All right. Minus three, gain control of target creature or planeswalker turn let it turn. Untap it, put a corruption counter on it, it gains haste. Ooh. And minus seven, gain control of each permanent with a corruption counter on it. This card's pretty bonkers. Um, this is fun. I like it, and I'm glad I got the full art. Ooh, Dalthy Voidwalker. This is another card that uh, I've been having my eyes on. This card is just bonkers powerful. Black, black for a 3-2 shadow, basically unblockable. If a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, instead exile it with a void counter on it. You can tap Sacrifice Dalthy Voidwalker, choose an exiled card an opponent owns with a counter on it, and you can play it this turn without paying its cost. This is going into Marin of Clan Nelt Hoth, most likely because I'm going to keep recurring it and bringing it back and keep casting all these different spells. Love it. Patchwork Gnomes, sure, whatever. Uh, an old school Bone Shards, that's cool. I like that. And uh, Karth the Lion, two black and green. It's an old school foil. Whenever it enters the battlefield, order planeswalker you control dies. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal a planeswalker card among them and put them into your hand. The rest on the bottom in a random order. Planeswalker abilities basically give it an additional plus one counter to activate. Wow, that is uh, that's a lot going on there. Uh, that could be a fun planeswalker themed deck. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty neat. I kind of like that card. And we got a clue token. Neat. All right, last pack. Let's see how we're doing with this. All right, art, whatever. A land. 
Common, common. Abundant Harvest. All right. Ooh, Persist. Nice. Return target non-legendary creature to the battlefield with a minus one, minus one counter on it. That's nice. All right. Glimpse of Tomorrow. Suspend three, red, red. Shuffle all the permanents you own in your library. Reveal that many cards. All non-aura cards come into play, and then uh, aura cards get put on afterwards. Basically, it lets you reset your battlefield and hopefully get larger and better stuff. I don't know if I love this card, but I'm willing to give it a try. A Mishra's Factory. Love it. Just a great overall card. Uh, Flame Tongue Yearling. Ooh, red, red for a 2-2, but it's got multi-kicker to 2. Plus one, plus one counter for each time it's kicked. Enters the battlefield, does damage equal to its power to target creature. This is basically Flame Tongue Kavu, but put on a more uh, flexible stick. So that's pretty neat. And then we also have a Hell Mongrel, just a foil. Uh, nothing too amazing, but discard a card, plus one, plus one. This seems like the Wild Mongrel card. And we also got another food. Neat. First third of the box, I'm already happy with it. So we'll see where this goes. So, first third of the box was opened. I noticed something interesting. Zero fetch lands. Uh, that was kind of interesting. I'm, I'm a little disappointed with that, like, in hindsight now. Because I was like, oh, wait, why was I excited about this set? Yeah, the fetch lands. So, let's hope we at least get a couple of them. Because I need to buy one of each for everything else. Because um, I need to have them, and this is the only time they're going to be low in price. So, let's hope that we get a few of them, at least. Um... Otherwise, I'm going to be a little disappointed. All right. Nice, beautiful uh, piece of art. I'm going to redo the, uh, the placement of items. We'll do the art, the basic. We'll do the commons. How about here? All right. Oh, that's an uncommon. Me not even paying attention. Violent Tumor. Death touch into the battlefield. Search your library for a card. Put it in your graveyard and shuffle. That's pretty neat. Archfiend of Sorrows. Harmonic Prodigy. Uh, one in red for a 1-3. Prowess. If the ability of a shaman or another wizard you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. That's pretty neat. Keeps replicating the process. I'll put the rares there. Uh, Fire and Ice. That's a rare in this set. That's pretty neat. Fire and Ice was seen as a super bonkers card in the early days of Magic, um, just because it was so flexible and did so many things. And yeah. All right. Uh, another Ornithopter of Paradise. Old school. I like it. So that's a common uh, foil guardian Kirin. All right, this is not a super impressive pack, but I will take it and we'll put the common there. I don't know, does that look all right? I'm thinking that's gonna be just fine for keeping things in a uh, nice order. Let me just kinda inch everything down a little bit because there's a little bit of a reflection. Uh, nope, we're just gonna leave it as is. All right, so next pack. I also noticed that there's actually a pull tab on these, so we'll be doing that from now on instead of this chaotic way that I'm just, like, ripping these apart. So, uh, art, cool, basic land, common, 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 uh, Kaleida Scorch, another Converge card, uh, Road to Ruin, we saw that before, Strike It Rich, we saw that before, Nykthos Paragon, whenever you gain life, you may put that many plus and plus one counters on each creature you control once each turn. I like it. All right, oh! All right, there we go. Dakon Shadow Slayer. Uh, Esper uh, enters the battlefield with a loyalty counter on him equal to the number of lands you control. You can plus one to surveil two, minus three to exile a creature, and minus six to put an artifact from your hand or graveyard to the battlefield. That was a pretty nice card. Uh, yeah, I kind of like that card a lot. Nice. Another Extruder. Sure. All right. I saw Aether Sworn, and I got super excited that I got a uh, sketched out version of the the Ristic Buddy guy. Uh, but yeah, Affinity for Artifacts, this card's pretty bonkers too. It has two different color requirements, but you could do a lot of stuff with that, and it also cascades. All right, Bottle Gnomes, uh, or sorry, Bottle Golems, I thought Gnomes. Uh, when it dies, you gain life equal to its power. Pretty neat, pretty neat. And we also got a Squirrel Token. Keep getting teased with all these Squirrel Tokens and not getting much uh, of the Squirrel Commander stuff. All right. Drop that down. That's a land common. Oh, we're already into the uncommons. That's kind of weird. Young, Necro Young Necromancer enters the battlefield. Exile two cards from your graveyard. If you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty neat. All right. Graceful Restoration. Choose one. Return artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield with an extra plus and plus one counter. Or return two card cards with cover two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's some pretty good reanimation stuff. I like it. 
Glorious Enforcer, being of each combat, more life in an opponent, double strike. That's awesome. Scour the Desert, exile creature card from your graveyard, mate X11 birds, where X is its toughness. Cool. Bird tokens are neat. Necromancer's Familiar, Hellband gives it lifelink. Uh, discarded card, it gains indestructible, untap it. That's pretty neat, too. Nice. Ooh, Rishiden Dockhand in an old school border. Uh, this is a really good card. It's it's Rishiden Port attached to a 1-2 Merfolk body. 1-2 Island Walk, 1 and tap, tap target land. Uh, good way to lock out your opponent if their mana screwed early in the game. All right, ooh, damn. Literally, uh, this is, again, another card that I've wanted. Destroy target creature. Creature destroyed this way can't be regenerated. You can overload her for two white-white. This card is going in every deck that runs black and white because it's just so flexible. It's single-piece removal, or if you don't like the battlefield, nuke it. Seal of Cleansing, just a beautiful card. Uh, I used to play this card a lot, actually. It's pretty powerful because you can drop it and get some enchantment triggers and then also use it to wipe out something that's annoying. Another Marble Gargoyle. This is a really old, weird card that keeps repeating. Smell Fear, Proliferate, and then target creature you control fights up to one target creature you don't control. Nice. And also a bird token. All right. Next one. All right. Scary looking squirrel. Land some basics. So it looks like on these packs you get more uncommons, which is awesome. Uh, we've seen that before. Spreading Insurrection, we've seen that before, we've seen that before, we've seen this before. Ooh, Nettle Cyst. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. It's got living weapon, equipment, just a really powerful card if you run a lot of uh, artifacts and enchantments. I like it. This card made a lot of controversial moves. Uh, Counterspell is now legal and modern, which is like really interesting. All right, we've got an old school Bone Shards. I like it. And we got a foil extruder. All right, all right. And also an elemental token, which is good for the, uh, I forgot the, the creature that makes it the, uh, whenever you sacrifice a land, you make a 5-3 elemental. So that's pretty neat. Oh, I was going to use the pull tabs. That's so much easier. That's probably why these packs feel a little bit looser, too. They wanted to make the pull tab like a, a thing. Uh, it looks like an eternal dragon, but I think there's a card that rhymes with it in this set. Foil land, I'll take it. Common, 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 common. Uncommon. All right, out of time. One white, white. When it enters the battlefield, untap all creatures, then phase them out until out of time leaves the battlefield. Put a time counter on out of time for each creature phased out this way. And vanishing, basically have to remove a time counter. When the last one's removed, you have to sacrifice it. That's pretty neat. Lip Riptide Laboratory. I'm actually a little bitter about this because I bought some of these when they were like a lot more expensive than they are now. It needed a reprint. I'm happy that it did, but my goodness, am I upset that uh, it ended that way. Jade Avenger, 2-2 Bushido. Cool. And a Gargadon. Ooh, another uh, etched card. Um, just basically has some suspend to it, but it's also a foil. Uh, so that looks really pretty with the sketch. And then also a lesser Gargadon for back from Prophecy from the list. So that's kind of interesting. We've got a Gargadon and we got a lesser Gargadon. And them being next to each other kind of shows you, like, what they have in common and, like, how lesser versus normal is supposed to play out, I guess. So, yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. I like getting cards from the list. Um, it's just cool going back to, like, old school uh, sets and really just being able to enjoy the nostalgia on some really weird uh, situations. All right, uh, land, dinosaur, common, 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 common. Ooh, a flame tongue yearling again. We got another one of those. Nice. <clears throat> flame bits, beginning of your upkeep. It does five damage to each planeswalker. That's that's a pretty anti planeswalker card. Uh, I like that, and it's got cycling. That's pretty neat. Chef's kiss, one red red, gain control of target spell that targets only a single permanent or player. Copy it. Then reselect the targets at random for the spell and copy. The new targets can't be you or permanent you control. That's pretty neat. You get to redirect stuff. Uh, you can't really choose what it happens, but, you know, it is what it is. Enchantress's Presence, uh, a really, really bonkers card. Um, lets you draw tons and tons of cards. I'm always on board for that. Aeromiba, discard a card, switches power and toughness to land a turn. Old school border, looks neat. 
For a foil, we got an Arcbound prototype, nothing to write home about, and we got another squirrel token. Cool. All right. Next up, where's that pull tab? There it is. Oh, that came out kind of weak. All right. That came out really weak. That pull tab dropped off the uh, edge of the pack way too soon. All right. Well, that wanted to be a little difficult today. Uh, oh, this is the card that I want. That sword is like really, really good. So, uh, oh, this is a foil. That goes in the foil pile. Bunch of commons. Feast of Sanity. Whenever you discard a card, it does one damage to any target. You gain one life. Cool. Mystic Redaction. Scry one. Whenever you discard a card, each opponent mills. Cool. Ghost Drifter. Another target creature gains flying. Neat. Gaia's Will. This is basically Yogmoth's Will translated to green. Uh, until in a turn, you can play lands and cast spells from your graveyard. A card will be put in your graveyard from anywhere this turn. Exile it. That's a pretty cool card. You can only suspend it, but, you know, it is what it is. I like it. It's pretty uh, pretty bonkers. Milkin. Mill a card to add colorless. I have a couple uh, decks that will really like this kind of stuff, so that's neat. Uh, Liquid Metal Torque. This is a two-mana uh, mana rock that I've been looking at for a while. Target non-land permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. You can do some sneaky shenanigans with that, but it also just two mana for a single mana producing rock. Moderation, one blue and white. Uh, you can't cast more than one spell each turn. Whenever you cast a spell, draw a card. Neat. I like that it's foil too. And we got a bird token. All right, a few more packs for this pile. Let's really hope we get some fetch lands because uh, I am getting a little concerned I'm not going to get any out of this. So I got some good stuff. I'll probably trade into it. But, you know, it's one of those things where, like, come on, give me some fetches. All right, some uncommons. Oh, there we go. Speaking of which, there's our first fetch land. That's funny how it works like that. Uh, Arid Mesa tap gets you a mountain or a plains. Just a bonkers powerful card. Nice. Uh, Angelic Curator, sure. Uh, Goblin Anarchomance, Anarchomancer. Each spell you cast that's red or green costs one less to cast. I have some cards to put in to th put this into. And, oh, look at that. I have another one for the second deck that I want to build. <laughs> that's great. And also we got a squirrel. Let me put that in the foil pile. All right, all right. One fetch land. Let's hope we can repeat the process because I would be disappointed if I only had one fetch land. But, you know, it is what it is. That's why people suggest buying singles instead of cracking packs. But, you know, I like to get the uh, the mixing it up a little bit. So, uh, some uncommons. Ooh, this is a, a mythic. Delve, so five, blue, blue. Merc Tide Regent for a 3-3 flying. Enters the battlefield with a plus and plus one for each instant and sorcery card exiled with it. Whenever an instant or sorcery card leaves your graveyard, put a plus and plus one counter on this. That's a pretty powerful card. I, uh, I like that. Sithis, Harvester's Hand. Uh, there we go. There's some more Enchantress stuff. So it looks like I kind of have to do some Enchantress things. It would be rude not to, right? Uh, Flame Rift, four damage to each player. This card is just fun. Uh, let's see. Abundant Harvest again. And for our foil, Steel Thin Whale. Affinity for Artifacts. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you can untap it. That's pretty neat. And we got a rules card instead of a token. Huh. All right. It looks like there's a game attached to this. So if you want to pause it and read this, this is quite interesting. Um, I'm going to read that later, but that's pretty fascinating. Like that they added some extra side games to their uh, sets of cards. And I really think that's what Wizards needs to do if they want to, like, stay as successful as they are, is, like, uh, you know, really, really make some cards, like, or some games, or, like, side games, or multiple ways to play, so that everyone feels included and, like, it's fun on there. So, yeah. Another Liquid Metal Torque. Search the premises. Whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, investigate. And that lets you make a clue. That's pretty good uh, in white, because people will stop attacking you if it advances you towards your stuff. Hunting pack makes 4-4s, four sure. Mind collapse, uh, 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker, sure. When it dies, create X tapped 1-1 one, one green squirrels where uh, X is its power. That's pretty neat. And it looks like we got another type of minigame attached, this time the Winchester Draft. So if you want to pause it and read it, go for it. And, uh, yeah, we can go from there. But, yeah, one fetch land. All right, I'll take it. We're making progress. 
We got one more group of packs to open, so hopefully we get at least one more. Uh, if we don't, looks like I got to do some shopping online for some cards. All right, I think we are on to our last set of packs. This is where it all comes to full force. Um, so let's hope we get something amazing. Uh, oh, I think we already have that as a Planeswalker, so that's pretty neat. All right, a land. We're going to mix it up again. We'll put the commons up here. All right, just two commons in there. Wow. Uh, Skyblades Boon. Sure. The Underworld Cookbook. Oh, I love that card. Uh, it just looks really neat, and it's such like an interesting referenced card among flavor text. Filigree Attendant. Sure. Uh, unblockable. Plus one, plus one if you have three or more artifacts. That's pretty neat. That can do some damage fast. Brainstone. This is definitely a cool card. Two tap, sacrifice Brainstone. Draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Uh, Brainstone is Brainstorm on a stick, but you have to sacrifice it, but there's ways to get it back. All right, Suspend. Exile target creature and put two time counters on it. If it doesn't have Suspend, it gains Suspend. You basically remove it and get rid of it for two turns, so that's uh, pretty, pretty valuable. Oh, oh, we got something big here. Chainer! Ooh! This is supposed to be a fun commander deck. I have a friend who plays it. Uh, he plays it exceptionally well, and it's always a nightmare to play against. Pun intended. Uh, but yeah, discard a card. You can cast a creature spell from your graveyard this turn, once per turn. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste. So that's just a fun commander to just drop stuff into play and have some fun with. Soul Snare, old school. I love it. And Scour the Desert. We've seen that before. And from the list, we got a Worn Power Stone. Very nostalgic card. Not necessarily an amazing card, but uh, pretty good in terms of, like, mana rocks if you want to get some ramping done just a little bit faster. Uh, and that isn't uncommon, so, yeah. I don't know how to open these anymore. I didn't like that one opening experience by pulling the side tab, but whatever. It is what it is. All right, we got another art, uh, land, some commons. Forgot my own system there. Foundation Breaker, Steel Dromedary, cool. Hey, another Sanctum Weaver, really good card. <laughs> Taps for one man of any color, what's the number of enchantments you control? Lonus Cryptozoologist, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. Sacrifice X clues. Target opponent reveals the top X cards of the library. You can put a non-land permanent card with mana X or less uh, onto the battlefield under your control. The rest goes in the bottom. That's cool. A little bit of uh, like a way to like make some creatures and start chipping away at your opponent's library. Nice. Nevenerals Disc, uh, a very iconic card. Four, enters the battlefield tapped. One tap, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. This card is amazing if and if you can give your artifacts indestructible. Because it doesn't say sacrifice, it just says destroy them. Uh, Glimmer Baron, old school, nice. Uh, I thought that was going to be a um, a foil fetch, but eh, it is what it is. And oh, we got a Herald's Horn from the list. Uh, wow, that's great. This card is absolutely bonkers and a very sought-after card from the Commander series. So that's awesome. Uh, I will gladly take one of those and probably trade it for something else of value. All right. Land, uh, art, land, common, 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 common. It seems that the number of commons and uncommons that you get really greatly vary. Uh, void mirror, two mana. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no colored mana was meant to cast it, counter that spell. Sucks if you're running an artifact or Eldrazi themed deck, but hey, it is what it is. Ooh, yes, solitude. 3-2 uh, flash lifelink, enters the battlefield, exile up to one other creature, uh, you're basically doing a uh, path to ex not a path to exile, swords to plowshares on a creature. Uh, and there's a lot of blink shenanigans that can be done with this card that people are really enjoying. So I'll gladly take Solitude. Oh, and Upheaval as well. Returns all permanents. Cool. Fun card. Nested Shambler, old school. Makes squirrel tokens. Sure. Oh, whoa. Okay. I wanted fetch lands. And I got fetch lands. A foil old school border scalding tarn. Uh, Christmas came early to me, and it came early again. But let's just talk about Scalding Tarn for a minute. 
Uh, this is one of the more valuable fetch lands, and I just got a foil old school border. Uh, I'm ecstatic about this. I may try to trade this card into just getting a set of fetch lands just to not have to buy them, but my goodness, is that beautiful. Yeah, I'm pretty happy right now, if you can't tell. Uh, yeah, that's going into the foils pile. Uh, and Baleful, uh, Balefire Liege, uh, two, and uh, Boros, Boros, Boros. Red creatures plus one plus one, white creatures plus one plus one. Play a red spell, three damage to target player. Play a white spell, gain three life. Lots of fun, crazy, wild stuff to do with that. But I believe that was overshadowed by the uh, foil fetch right there. So, yeah, I'm pretty darn happy about that. Let's keep going for fetches, because apparently just talking optimistically about them seems to bring them on. So, uh, I'm having fun here, so hope you are too watching this video for, you know, the, the maybe 12 or 13 people who end up watching these. But I appreciate it. This is more for me, but, um, you know, it also serves as a nice historic way to look back at magic cards over the years. So, uh, put some commons down. Wow, a lot of commons in here. All right. Whenever one or more plus and plus one encounters are put on Herd Baleth, create that many 4-4, four, four, uh, create a 4-4... Four, four, Green Beast Creature Token. Cool. Ooh. All right. I'm going to try. Asmoranomar Dekadastinakuldakar. I think I did pretty well with that, honestly. Um, it doesn't have a mana cost because its name is too long. As long as you've discarded a card this turn, you can pay black or red to cast it. When it enters the battlefield, search the library for a card named the Underworld Cookbook. Real, put it in your hand. Sacrifice two foods. Target creature deals six damage to itself. This can be a very cheap commander to keep playing. So, yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. Scourge Familiar, discard a card to add black. Cool. That's uncommon. Uh, Terminal Agony, destroy target creature, and it's got madness. Nice. Uh, Arcbound Mouser. Sure, 1-1 one, one lifelink, whatever. And also we got a Timeless Witness. Um, I don't know exactly what this is referencing as a card, but sure. I'll just put it here. Because I think I lost track of where I put everything, but whatever. It is what it is. All right, let's keep pushing through. Come on, give me some more fetch lands. I want them. Some art, land, mine collapse. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, Vectus Gloves, plus two, plus two, and as artifact land walk. Eh, not very great. Healer's Flock, three, three, flying lifelink for triple white. If you're playing Mono White Devotion, I think this might have a seat in there for at least one or two of them. Verdant Command. Choose two. Target player creates two tap 1-1 one, one green squirrel tokens. Counter target loyalty ability of a planeswalker. Ooh. Exile card from a graveyard or gain three life. That's pretty good. All right. Oh, look at that. We got a time shifted or old school border chainer nightmare addict. Adept. We've seen it before. Nice. Lens flare sketched. Okay. Uh, Tizeris Charger. Sure. And we also got something from the list, Boros Challenger, red-white for a 2-3 with Mentor, and it can get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Neat. Some cool stuff. Some cool stuff. Um, let's see if we get something that is a little more, uh, you know, celebration-worthy. Land, another Ornithopter of Paradise. I love it. All right, bunch of commons we can toss in. Uncommon. Cool. Another card. Hey, there we go. Verdant Catacombs, uh, the green-black fetch. That is a lovely, lovely fetch land to have as well. I'm happy to add it to the group. A Necrogoyf. Uh, power and toughness equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, they discard a card, and it's got Madness. This card can get pretty bonkers pretty fast in Commander. A Seal of Removal. I love it. A sketched out uh timeless witness enters the battlefield return target card from graveyard to hand that's what the uh that token was back there when you eternalize it i guess so that's pretty neat it's kind of like a eternal witness but this has the ability to get it out a second time nice wave sifter enters the battlefield investigate twice cool and it's got evoke as well that's pretty neat that's a pretty uh utility card and also a timeless dragon nice all right few more packs to go let's hope we get something bonkers i mean i i already got something bonkers but i'm just being greedy here all right some commons blossoming calm gain hex proof until your next turn you gain two life and it rebounds that's pretty neat that'll buy you two turns blessed respite target player shuffles their graveyard into their library prevent all combat damage 
Somebody was talking about this on a, a magic video that I was watching, and this is really interesting because fogs tend to be underrated because of their lack of, like, utility, but this also nukes a graveyard. I think it's a super valuable card. Thought Monitor, uh, 6 in blue for infinity for artifacts, 2-2 two, two flying, enters the battlefield, draw 2 cards. Not bad at all. Uh, squirrel Mob, hey, this is a pretty iconic card. Uh, plus 1, plus 1 for each other squirrel on the battlefield, that's neat. Kitchen Imp, uh, cool. Yeah, I think that goes there. All right, a Jewel-Eyed Cobra, that's pretty neat. Uh, when it dies, create a treasure token, that's pretty cool. And also a Nuisance Engine from the list. Uh, this just makes really, like, annoying artifacts that people have to deal with. And yeah, it's kind of annoying. Uh, you could say it is a Nuisance uh, to deal with because you keep making a chump blocker every turn or artifacts to sacrifice for other types of fodder. All right, another art card. And common, 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 common. Ren's Run Hydra, sure. Hey, another Scalding Tarn. I'll take it. I'll take two of them. Maybe I can trade this for another one because I only really need one of each for Commander. I kind of just print them out and use them for other decks. Uh, people are pretty understanding when, you know, a single piece of cardboard costs 30 to $500. All right. Yavamaya Elder, really good card. Iconic from old school stuff. Uh, Faithless Savaging, discard a card and draw a card, and then it rebounds. Cool. And an Arcbound Shikari. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each other artifact creature you control, and it's got Modular 2. That's pretty neat. And we also have a bird. Nice. Bird token, I should say. All right. This is the second to last pack. Let's get something good, or save it for the last pack, because that's always what happens. All right, put in the land, some commons. Terramorph, search a library for a basic land, put it in the battlefield, and then shuffle, and it's got rebound. That's kind of good. All right, and out of time as like an old school border. Uh, that's a really, really nice looking card. Archon of Cruelty enters the battlefield or attacks. Target opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Discard a card and lose three life. You draw a card and gain three life. That's pretty fun. All right. Chance Encounter. Whenever you win a coin flip, put a luck counter on Chance Encounter. Being of your upkeep, if it has ten or more luck counters, you win the game. It's a cool win condition. All right. Floodhound on Sketched. And then we have a Foil uh, Sketched Sudden Edict. Split second. Target player sacrifices a creature. That's pretty bonkers. I like having a, uh, a foil etched version of it. That's that's pretty uh, powerful for control. And then we have a squirrel token. All right, last pack. Let's get something good. Let's get like the best pull ever. Because hey, I want it. <laughs> All right. Oh, that is a creepy, creepy looking baron. All right, a foil land. So that's that's gotta mean something, right? All right, so we got a common, and we've immediately jumped to uncommon. I feel good about this pack already. Monoskeleon, sure. Arcbound Shikari, we've seen that. Arcbound Whelp, nice. Barbed Spike, enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 colorless Thopter artifact creature, and then attach it to it. Nice. Slag Strider, uh, affinity for artifacts, yep. Cool. Doesn't matter. Calibrated Blast, 2 in red for an instant. Reveal cards on top of your library until you reveal a non land card. Uh, put the revealed cards in the bottom of your library in a random order. When you reveal a non-land card this way, it does damage equal to its mana value to any target, and it's got flashback. Ah, it's decent. All right, next. Oh, we went back to uncommons. Zoran Orb. That's a really iconic card, too. Sack of land to gain two life. And late to dinner. All right, all right. A sketch version. I think this is the last card. And Viashino Lash Claw. All right, well, you know what? I'll take it. I got some pretty uh, heavy value in this, and we end with a beast token. I got some crazy value in this set. Um, the the fact that I have a foil old school scalding tarn like seriously is uh, you know is doing it for me. This is this is like the prized card of the deck, and the fact that I have two scalding tarns makes me extraordinarily happy as well. So yeah. Um, this was a fun set. Uh, I do have to buy a couple single cards, uh, but Modern Horizons 2 overall, I really liked it. Uh, this is definitely a set that is very iconic. It references a lot of old school things. 
It's a little pricey, but you know what? Sometimes it's worth it if you just, uh, you know, save up some money and just buy a box because you don't know the direction you want to go in Magic. But as everybody always says, buy singles. Uh, because you're guaranteed to get the card that you need, and you can actually control the budget that you need to spend to get what you need. Now, if you're like me and you just kind of play casually for fun and you don't know what direction you want to go in, you just kind of want to like build things based on whatever the, the fates or the luck of the world sends you, buy a box. Have fun with it. You know, just make sure you're not breaking the bank and make sure you're being responsible with your finances everywhere else. But if this is your fun thing like it is for me, have fun like I do. And uh, yeah, so anyways, that's about it for Modern Horizons 2. The set boosters were amazing. Uh, I do need to buy some individual cards, but overall, I had a ton of fun, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. So have yourself a fantastic day, and if you like these videos, like, comment, and subscribe. But if you're not feeling it, that's fine too. All right, have a good one. Thanks for watching.